love to welcome all of you to our third and final installment in the Becoming the Ultimate Office Manager webinar. And this part is part three on creating dynamic strategies to increase practice, production, and profit. Really quickly, I'm going to give you a quick overview of who we are at eAssist. Uh, here's a few of the services that we provide at eAssist, including billing, which is our, our number one bread and butter. We have amazing coaching and consulting led by Lois herself. Uh, we've got credentialing, insurance verification, patient billing, and then the amazing full schedule, which is one of our newer services that we have launched for recall, retention, keeping your schedule full. So we're going to go into a couple of those later as well, but just to give you an overview, that's what we do at eAssist. We are the world's largest dental billing service provider. We have over 1,500 team members and we serve thousands of offices nationwide. We won a lot of cool awards that we're really proud of and excited, but that's not why you guys are here today. So I'm not gonna dwell on this one. Uh, I would love to introduce you guys to three amazing women who are our panelists today. Courtney, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So my name is Courtney Roberts. I'm the Chief Director of Onboarding here at ESS, and I have been waiting all week for this webinar to share some great information with you guys and I'll leave next to my co-panelists that are amazing. Hi, everybody. Amazing. Go ahead, Lois. Sorry, Sarah, jumped the gun. Uh, my name is Lois Bant. I'm the Chief Consulting Officer for eAssist and super excited to be here and to be able to share uh, our little um, helpful hints to help you improve your bottom line and keep those schedules full. Thank you for uh, allowing me to talk to you today. Yeah, and Lois has actually been in dentistry for 40 years because she started at the age of two. That's so right. if you guys have, <laughs> yes, she's just been in dentistry a really long time. All That's right, her. Lindsay. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. My name is Lindsay Barrera. I am the full schedule project manager. Um, I have been with EOSIS for almost one year in dentistry for almost 20 and I'm very excited to give you some tips and tricks to getting people in for appointments. Awesome, thanks Lindsay. Really quickly, I wanted to remind you guys about our core purpose, which is delivering peace of mind. Now our goal for any time we have one of these webinars is to deliver peace is mine. That's why we do these. That's why we're all here. We just want to help you a little bit. So that being said, this slide here is to ask you to please not sue us. We are not la uh, tax or legal experts. We are not investment uh, experts by any means. We're just office managers who want to help give you a couple of little nuggets that maybe will help you out. Um, so please don't sue us. Our attorney makes us put this in here, um, but pretty please. <laughs> All right, here's a couple of things we hope you'll learn today, and we're going to go into a lot of details about things that we'll cover things like social media, we're going to cover strategies of, about talking to your patients, magic words you should use when speaking to them, but there's two things I really want you to keep in mind when you're listening to the webinar today, and that is about building profits and protecting production. Everything we're covering today plays into one of these areas. We want you to build the most profitable practice you possibly can, uh, reducing overhead, and then protect your production as if it is, you know, your life source because it is. <laughs> All right. And when it comes to protecting the profits of your practice, we have an amazing new uh, resource available to you guys called Buying Power. This has only just been released in this last week. What we've done at ESIS is we've actually gone out and negotiated some of the best deals in the industry with amazing companies like Henry Shine Supplies, Equipment. We also have uh, Implant Direct. We have Dental Intel, some really great brands that have partnered with us to give really amazing discounts. Um, and this is only available for ESS clients and it is completely free. And I mean that literally completely free. It costs you not a single dime to get any of these discounts. We are doing this for our clients for free. Um, so I hope you guys will go ahead and sign up. It takes about five minutes to get started at dentalbuyingpower.com slash get started. And again, we have had some of our clients come to us who are like, oh, I don't know if this is really going to work for me. I already get pretty good deals with my supply company. And we ran some of the numbers and they're saving 30,000 a year with us. Um, so we hope that we can save you, you know, thousands of dollars this year through this program. Again, completely free for all of our clients that are on the line. Please go check this out, brand new, only just released. We haven't even emailed you guys about it yet from any of our marketing team. So this is brand, brand new here. Please go ahead and check it out um, and be one of the first people to start saving some extra money. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do before we get started is actually get a poll to ask you guys about your scheduling coordinator. Now, when we say fully dedicated here, we mean 100% fully dedicated, not somebody who has to wear a lot of hats or bump around to a lot of different roles or responsibilities. We want to know if there's someone that you have in your office that is fully dedicated to this. So I'm going to launch a poll right now. You guys will see that um, right up on your screen. And all you have to do is hit yes or no. 
quick, quick poll. Go ahead and take a vote for us. We'll give you guys just a few seconds. And again, a lot of the content we'll cover today circles around your schedule, right? Keeping your schedule full um, and how to manage that. And so we wanted to get an understanding of how many of you have a fully dedicated person or how many of you are having to wear this hat or have somebody who's wearing this hat and multiple hats at the same time. Awesome. All right. Looks like we got 70% of you guys who have voted so far. If you haven't voted, please go ahead and drop a vote in there right now. We're going to leave that open for just a couple more seconds. Awesome. We're at 77%. Thank you guys for taking the time to vote. 81. All right. Let's go ahead and end that poll. And I'm going to share the results with you guys right now. So it looks like about 64% of you do not have a fully designated scheduling coordinator. About 36% of you do. So that's awesome. That helps us know how to target the message and make sure that we're being as much value to you guys today as possible. All right, that being said, I'm going to hand it on over to Lindsay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. So let's talk about attracting new patients. It's so important. Things are opening back up. You want to get people back in. I'm here to give you a couple strategies for external and internal marketing to really get things going again. External strategies. Although there's many, I really like to touch on the points that are really important as far as getting a really quick result. One of those is market to your ideal audience. It goes against with, of course, Facebook and Google and Twitter, Instagram. Make sure if you can send an ad out in one of those forms where you can designate zip code, patient region, the type of patients you want to have, you can definitely do that. Sometimes it's anywhere from $5 to $20. A little marketing really goes a long way. But with that being said, I definitely want to make sure people know, update your social media. It is so important. I talk to patients almost every day and they will always tell me, I didn't even know you guys were open. I didn't even know you were accepting new patients. Is this doctor back? Is this hygienist back? So when you can make sure that your social media and or Google, any type of website that you have is up to date, it is really important. People are starting to notice that things are opening back up and they do want to get in. But of course, most people are not going to pick up the phone and call. They're going to look online to see. Um, also, something as little uh, tip and trick that I always tell people is send baskets. It's important to send a gift basket or give some sweet treats or talk to an HA, uh, HR department, excuse me, in a business in your area. It is really important that sometimes you're so close to people within where your office is, but you forget to target and go maybe into the neighborhood and let them know that you're there and you're accepting new patients. Um, sometimes it's close to just walking outside the door of the office and saying, which business should I go do today? So for internal strategies, these are things that are so often missed, but so very important. So one of them is advertise in the lobby. We all know that we're guilty when we're in a lobby or in a waiting room with other people. We're always just kind of looking around. What can we look at? What can we focus our mind on instead of the patient next to me? I always say, put some type of flyers in your lobby. Let patients know what insurances you take, what type of financial arrangements you have. If you are accepting new patients, make sure that your presence is known. So even even while they're not in their appointment yet, or even if they're there with somebody, they're able to know everything that the office has to offer. The next one is brainstorm on how to get those new patients in. I do tell a lot of my doctors when they ask me, how can I really entice people to come back? I say, throw a special out. If it's an existing patient, offer a slight discount on treatment. If it's a new patient, maybe free take-home bleachings, maybe a discount on Zoom lightning treatment. Something that allows them to claim something for going in is almost a double win. You not only get them to come in, get the treatment needed, and kind of rebuild that patient base back up, but you also give them a little gift to go with too. Um, a big one that kind of goes together is personal thank you cards and welcome letters. This is another thing that anybody can start doing today. I mean, personal thank you cards, even if it's a plain generic card that just says, thanks for coming in and you have the doctor or the hygienist or maybe just the front desk staff sign it. If you send that to the patient, hey, thank you for your referral. It really does make a difference. I always tell offices a little touch goes a really long way. Same thing with welcome letters. We all know that we're guilty when we go to an office, whether it's a dental or medical office, you take the papers, you throw it in your back seat, you don't look at it again for six months to a year, hopefully not that long because it is important to come in for your cleaning before that. However, if you do, just to make sure that you know, a welcome letter is really important, whether it's an email or snail mail, anything that reminds that patient, hey, this is what you came in for, this is what you need to do, and 
and we'd love to talk to you about that. Um, another one that, again, is often missed is asking for feedback. It is so important. Anytime you ask for feedback, obviously, things are not always perfect. We'd all like them to be, but there's always room for improvement. It's always nice when you have a patient's feedback and telling them, hey, what did you like about the appointment today? Was there anything we can change? So even if that appointment was a not 100% on board for that visit, you can 100% make sure it's completely on board for the next. That was amazing, Lindsay, as all your ideas are beautiful, just as you are, it was such great information. And kind of leads into what we have here is 83% you know, of consumers heed suggestions from friends and family more than all other forms of advertising. So that's not only important for those in dentistry, but this statistic is true across all industries. So for example, if you're planning a trip to Key West, okay, and you have a close friend that used to live there, it's very likely you're gonna ask that close friend for the best recommendations of what to do while you're in Key West versus just going and looking up online or on Yelp or something like that. And I think this is really important in our field because we have the PPO wars where EOBs are basically telling patients, you know, hey, you should go and check out that in-network provider. So to reset a patient's mindset at this point, it's going to take someone that they trust to give them a recommendation that will supersede online reviews. Now, I think we all know that your internal team is going to be the number one catalyst to great patient-to-patient -patient referrals. But we all have team members that are a little shyer than the others, or they may feel sort of awkward asking for a review, or they just don't know what sort of vernacular to use whenever they're asking for a referral. So coming up on this next slide, I have this fantastic verbiage for you guys to use. And keeping it simple, it's, hey, we love reading patient feedback because you are so important to us here. You know, please let us know how we're doing with a quick Google review versus the very bland and suggestive, you know, can you just give us a good review? And to bring this full circle is try to make this enticing for your team, you know, something that makes it fun for them too. And what I've seen work really well in the past is referral bingo. So everyone in the office gets a bingo card and some of the categories are things like, you know, gave three patients referral cards or office received two reviews on a Tuesday from Google. Another box could be something along the lines of, you know, new patient had a referral card from someone that you referred. And you can get creative with the categories, but I've noticed that if you can make really anything into a game that has prizes, the success rate is significantly higher than just reminding your team in the morning huddle to please ask for more reviews. Now, just another note about reviews. Um, with your practice, you're going to have not so stellar reviews from time to time, and that's okay. It gives your review platform a sense of truthfulness and a little extra personality when you have some low star reviews mixed in. And to go along with that, another pro tip here is respond to all of your reviews, not just the bad ones or the good ones, but make sure all of them are getting your attention. You know, take the time to let others know that you care what people have to say about your business, that you're present on your social media platforms, now, I will say with this, be very simple with your responses because you don't want to cross that HIPAA violation territory. So just an easy response to a, a good review is something like, wow, what an all-star review. Thank you so much. Or that review made us feel like we hit a grand slam. So something easy, but embracing each and every review so you can build your reputation, uh, keep patients happy, and ultimately prevent cancellations, which I'm going to let Lois, the famous Lois Banta, uh, take over the category of preventing cancellation. Thanks so much, Courtney. Uh, you know, a, a good uh, amount of the next few slides we're going to be talking about is not only how to prevent cancellations, but what to do when you do get a cancellation and also ultimately the cost to a practice for unfilled open appointments. And I know that, um, Sarah, I believe you have a poll regarding uh, this process so that we can kind of tee the ball up and uh, make sure that we're addressing everything that we need to for this webinar today on cancellations. Exactly. And we do, you know, we have a couple of options here that are large. So I'm launching that poll right now. Um, if you guys could just quickly select one of these options, we're trying to get an understanding again, this, this is reflective of size of practice or just size of cancellation uh, issues in each practice. And it'll help us customize some of the advice that we're going to be giving you in the next few slides. So we've got about 46% of you guys who have voted so far. If you can go ahead and pull up that poll, it should come up on your screen for you. Just select one of those four options. It's one per day here and there, uh, two to five 
or six plus in a day or so many you can't even keep track. So if you guys could please select your, uh, your options there, that will really help us in, in customizing the information we share with you on the webinar right now. It uh, looks like we got about 64% of the votes in. I'm going to leave it up for just two more seconds. Please go ahead and jump in there and drop in a vote. Really will help us out here on the webinar. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll now and share the results. And it's about what I think I would have expected. What do you think, Lois? We're looking at about two to five cancellations on average each day. Does that sound about right for what you've experienced? Yeah, historically, that's what I've experienced when I've been in coaching a practice. And um, it, it one of the biggest frustrations I feel a practice experiences on a, a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis. It, it also is one of the biggest costs to a practice. So, um, you know, let's go ahead and talk about that. What can we do about um, scenarios that that wreak havoc in our lives and, and cause us the biggest frustrations? Well, one of the thing is, you know, uh, if you have too many openings and you have to send team home, you can you can lose compensation for that. You really you don't want to um, make the practice suffer financially, but it can increase your overhead. And uh, also it can cause you to have not enough budget for other things that you important things that you need to in, excuse me, invest money on in the practice. But most importantly, you're going to have frustrated teams, frustrated doctors, frustrated hygienists. Um, Open time in the schedule, I would say, is one of the main causes of huge stress in a dental practice. You want to alleviate that stress. If I'm going to keep it in a nutshell, I will say have a better backup plan. So if we're looking at the next slide, you know, on average, 10% of dental appointments are canceled in a practice. The average uh, percentage of time that appointments remain unfilled averages at about 15%. It's a huge cost to a practice. You can lose um, anywhere from forty dollars to $100,000 a year just in unfilled or unrecovered appointments. So if we were going to go to the next slide, I want to just point out specifically, let's say, uh, as an example, your average appointment um, value of a hygiene appointment is $200. That's about average. The average practice works about 220 days a year. So if you have one opening, some of you, you know, 60 some percent of you said, you know, two to five openings per day, one unfilled hygiene appointment per day over 220 days can lose the practice as much as $44,000. Then if you translate that over onto the operative schedule, one open hour of operative time unfilled, you could have put something in there, can cost the practice another $105,000. Think of this, folks, on this webinar. If you do nothing but reduce one hour of open time in hygiene and one hour of open time in operative, you're going to, you're going to save the practice almost $150,000. Now, some of you have more than one hygienist make, make that times three. If you have three hygienists and each hygienist has one open hour, take that $44,000 and multiply it by three. It gets your attention because ultimately what that translates to, which is what I pointed out on the previous slides is once you have that unfilled time, now you have decisions to make on to whether or not you need, you can keep these hygienists and the assistants and the administrative teams gainfully employed. Everything has a trickle down effect or a trickle up effect in costs of a practice and increasing overhead. So let's talk about some of the protocols that you could have in place that are designed not, not just to prevent all cancellations and build appointments, no practice on the planet can guarantee that you can remove or, or eliminate all cancellations in open time. But if you have a really good backup plan, you can eliminate most of them. And I can prove that. So um, you need to add up how many cancellations occur each day and each week. If it's more than one per day, you're averaging anywhere from 10 to 25% open time times that times the average value of a hygiene appointment. Now you know how many dollars you might let be walking out the door. The most common reasons for a cancellation, you know, uh, maybe their schedule changed or maybe they're, they can't get off work or maybe their child is out of school, et cetera. Um, all those reasons for cancellations should be fodder for being able to build in more effective cancellation protocols. Uh, I've mentioned before, the better backup plan. If they're rescheduling or they're just canceling, your backup plan, one of the backup plans that you need to have in place is to offer the patient another appointment in four or six weeks. Now I will point that out in a couple of um, slides that we're gonna be going in a row is that you wanna make sure that your protocols, 
are effective for your practice? Do you take the time to actually reach out and get the patient rescheduled if they called to cancel their appointment and they didn't reschedule on the phone? Are they not rescheduling because you've asked them if they want to reschedule or are you offering them another appointment in four or six weeks? So some of the other protocols that you want to um, make sure that you, everyone's aware of is give yourself a time frame to call that patient back. Typically within 24 hours, if you wait more than 24 hours, absence makes the mind forget. So you want to make sure you try to get those patients back on the schedule, ideally while the patient is on the phone. Um, you can set up reminders within your software for patients who haven't called back. These are these wonderful, amazing scheduling reports. And by the way, I'm telling you about all these protocols. Lindsay's team is like A plus excellent at this. If you want to remove that stress in your practice, hire Lindsay and her team. They'll take care of business in short order. Um, you want to let the patient know that if they are in fact canceling your next appointment, let's go ahead and schedule your next appointment. I have four weeks from today or six weeks from next Thursday. Chances are once you've made it so inconvenient for the patient, they're not going to cancel their original appointment. So that is a pretty amazing solution. So some additional information that we want to share with you on the next slide is to set these specific protocols for your office and keep in mind kindness, conscientiousness, transparency, and honesty play a very, very important role in um, making sure that your patient either doesn't cancel or offers to reschedule. Also, make sure that you have these protocols in place to retain the patient. That means you, if you let them loose into your abyss of unscheduled list, you're never going to get to the end of that list ever. I don't rarely see a practice say, oh, my unscheduled list is very, very small. No, it's typically like 12 pages long because they goes into the abyss. You don't follow up on those patients. So therefore they fall through the cracks. So you want to make sure that you always have a good protocol to get any patient who has canceled but not rescheduled, rescheduled scheduled in the practice and that you have a dedicated team member, a scheduling coordinator following up on those patients who haven't rescheduled. But that's why I talk about Lindsay so much. So Lindsay, I think that you are super, I've never met anyone um, audience. I've never met anybody like Lindsay before I say this to her. I would say it about her if she weren't present, if she were present, I just, I have a, uh, I heart you, Lindsay. So tell them. Oh, about I heart you too. <laughs> Guys, I have webinars every day. I'm like, I love this. It makes me feel so good. Uplifting my spirit. Thank you. <laughs> well, speaking of our services, let me tell you a little bit about Full Schedule. So Full Schedule is one of ESS's newest service. It is amazing. It is awesome. Let me just tell you a brief summary. We are a premier personalized scheduling service to get your patients scheduled, whether it be unscheduled treatment needed, recall appointments needed. We help take that pressure off of your front desk to make sure and help them get those patients in. We 100% stand apart from any other service out there. We do offer a money back guarantee on appointments that are not made within your same tier. Speaking of tier, where do you want to start? We offer three. We have an essential plan, a plus plan, an advanced plan. Wherever you feel like your office will lie, we will be glad to be part of it. We offer a lot other than just scheduling. So please feel free to reach out to us for more information. You will get maybe me or a mini Lindsay, but they are all like me. They have awesome personalities. They love talking to patients. They love getting patients scheduled. And we're always going to be an extension of that practice. We're not going to, never going to represent ourselves as anything other than that. So please feel free to email team at eassist.me or call 1-844-EASSIST for more information about that today. And, and just a little additional caveat, I know that Lindsay, when they set goals to hire these, um, it's a pretty special kind of person that will be able to take on the challenge and the, and the um, positivity, really, they have to have a positive spirit and be an excellent communicator. And if you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to sit well in that position. And so they've been very careful to find the exact right fit to be able to make your practice get those appointments filled. And that's why I I'm so, so excited about this service. I would say it if you weren't sitting here, Lindsay. So, <laughs> Thank you so much, Lois. All right, back to, let's talk about um, some more of these verbal skills. Cause I think that these are um, some things that can really help, um, help you 
say the right words at the right time to get the best action. What can we do to help you keep this appointment is always what you want to end with, no matter what the patient's saying about scheduling, rescheduling, canceling, et cetera, short notice canceling. Um, you might, they might be having an operative appointment where they have active decay or a cracked tooth. And you can reiterate then to the patient, you know, doctor would be so concerned about you canceling this appointment. What can we do to help you keep this appointment? Are you aware you have active decay? Those are the two words that people don't like to hear. You have active decay, or like, ooh, that's a big bad thing. You know, ask open-ended questions. Don't ask them the yes, no questions. No, don't say, do you want to go ahead and get rescheduled for another appointment? Because that's, that puts the patient in the driver's seat and they have an easy opportunity to say no. Instead, let's go ahead and schedule your appointment. The next two appointments I have available, blah, blah, blah. At the 14th at 11 or at the 21st at 10, which of those two times works best for you? And you're guiding the patient towards a solution. You're tricking the patient into feeling as though they're the ones who are in control of the outcome but guess who's actually in control? That dental provider, you're actually in control. So a couple of more additional items on my list of, of how to say what you say, which I feel is one of the important, one of the most important aspects of keeping your schedule full is knowing how to choose your words wisely. So don't offer the very next available appointment. Offer to um, offer an appointment out six weeks and then put them on the priority list should you get an, a, a change in your schedule. If you have that opening that's available tomorrow, don't offer them that appointment. You're so tempted to do that, but don't do it. Then call them back 30 minutes minutes later and say, hey, guess what? I just took one of those rare changes in my schedule and we thought of you. Now the patient feels special and honored. So continuing on in the next slide, let's go ahead and talk about a few more verbal skills. Again, don't pre-schedule hygiene visits for patients who are risky in your practice. Those risky patients are people who have canceled multiple times or have failed their appointment. Their loyalty isn't in showing up for an appointment. And as I pointed out in the previous slides, every unfilled appointment is worth thousands of dollars once you add that together over a 12 month period. Um, let the patient know um, if they're a risky patient, just say, give us a call when you're ready. And we know you're busy and we know that your time is so important and blah, blah, blah. But what you're really saying is we don't think you're going to show up. So we're just not going to pre-appoint you for your appointment. Give us a call when you're ready and we will let you know. I love in the pediatric environment, the um, parents who say, oh, I can only take an appointment for my child after school. Oh, really? Well, so a really good comeback if you're a pediatric office listening to this call is we save those after school appointments appointments for kids who are having trouble at school. And guess what? No parent likes to admit their child is having trouble at school. So they take the unpopular times. Oh, well, we'll save that appointment for the child who's having trouble. My child is a straight A student, so we're good. So it, 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 it's kind of reverse psychology. Now let's, uh, let's look at some more magic words. We're concerned about you. Let me check with uh, Susan, our hygienist, to see if we can still see you if the patient calls you and says, hey, I'm running late. You know, running late on a hygiene schedule is the kiss of death for a hygienist because they have the least amount of flexibility in running behind schedule because the next appointment is appointed right after them. Um, instead of asking them to call back to confirm their appointment, why don't you just simply leave a message or a text message or an email that says, hey, we've got you on our schedule tomorrow at three o'clock and we're looking forward to seeing you. Um, instead of saying to the patient, we have a cancellation, you say to the patient, we have one of our rare changes in our schedule. Instead of saying, we can put you on our sooner if possible list or our short call list or our ASAP list or whatever your software calls it, call it a, v a, a VIP list, a priority list, that it's, it adds a little element of excellence that your practice is relaying to that patient. You can say my next app available appointment is blah or blah, which works best for you. <laughs> or you could say, can you come in on this day at this time? The dreaded what time and day of the week works best for you is the worst thing a dental practice can utilize in their verbal skills because the patient's actually going to tell you. Then you're going to skip over all those available appointments because you just listened to the patient who says, I want a Thursday afternoon. You're going to skip over the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday appointments. So don't, don't trap yourself like that. And then instead of asking for that call back again, just say, we're looking forward to seeing you at your next appointment. We're so excited to see you. Now, Lindsay, I'm going to hand this off to you. So let's talk about filling those empty chairs and what yes. the 
expensive. And great, exactly. great advice, Lois. Love those magic words so much. Music to my ears. So let's talk about tips to reduce the empty chair expense. Well, first and foremost, let's talk about magic words for same day treatment. It is so important to offer same day treatment in a dental practice. I always say, try to have a plan together when you're doing same day treatment. We'll talk about that in a minute, but always, obviously with the patient, it saves them time. They're already in, they're like, well, if I'm here, I'll go ahead and get it done. When people tell me, well, what magic words do you use? Like, what would you say? I say, use the magic sentence. I can take time to take care of this today. And you are going to hear the patient say, oh really? Like you can, you can do it while I'm here? Yes, let's get it done. Even adding 15 minutes, 20 minutes to an appointment that you know that a patient has treatment that needs to get done, it will make wonders. It won't even, you know, just make the patient happy. It'll make your production go up for the day, for the month. It works wonders all the way around. So it's so important to do. With that being said, the next thing to always remember with same day treatment on the next slide that we're going to talk about is have a plan of action. Plan of actions are so important. I always encourage people to make sure and have morning meetings. Make sure you look at the schedule. Really look at the patients that are coming in. Pinpoint who you want to focus on as far as who you can get same day treatment with. It's going to make such a difference. A little touch really goes a long way. I say it all the time. And just a little blurb. So morning meetings are great to plan for same day treatment. They prevent stress on the staff and the patient. To improve efficiency with same day treatment, ensure staff are cross trained in the office. And it is a great time to work on cross training in monthly meetings or after office or before office meetings. I always say if everybody has a plan of action, like, hey, I may be front desk, but if I can seat a patient while the doctor is finishing up treatment or an assistant can take a patient and check them out while I'm getting somebody checked in, it will make, again, wonders happen. I always say wonders happen, but it is wonderful, if you will, the amount of change that you will get by changing little tips and tricks for the office. All right, and then I wanted to give you guys just a few, just a quick blurb here on Dental Zing. This is such an incredible educational platform that we've recently launched. So if you like hearing from people like Courtney and Lindsay and Lois, we have courses that are available for you that have um, CE included. Um, and these courses are 20% off again for all of our ESS clients only. So you get a great discount if you're an ESS client. Um, you can check out what course offerings we have at dentalzing.com. We're adding a couple every month, so it's continuing to grow. Just a really robust library of both live and on-demand courses that are available there. And you can hear from some strong, amazing experts with years and years of experience in the industry. So please check them out at dentalzing.com. Um, and again, if you are an ESS client, don't forget to ask your ESS team for your unique discount code that you can use at checkout to save 20%. Awesome. And guys, I'm going to be with you for the next few slides. So get ready to change your dental office life. I'm about to show you some great tips and tricks to getting those patients in. So little things, when it comes to going over treatment plans, wording and lingo is so important. I always hear people say when we're in the front office, your copay is this, you're going to owe this, you need to pay this. Little things like that are going to turn off the patient 100%. They're not going to book. I can guarantee it. They're going to be like, I'm not ready to pay that amount. I don't want to invest in that money. No way. Speaking of investment, these are some type of words to use instead. Instead of using words like your cost, your price, um, this is what you will owe, you will have to pay. Use things like this is going to be your fee for the service. It is an investment. I know it's really expensive, but it is for your overall care, dental care and health care. Um, I encourage people just to kind of change the wording up to really show patients they're not just another dollar sign. You really do care about them getting the treatment completed and you're not focused all about the money. Now, speaking of money, the next thing we want to talk about is six strategies for patient retention success. How can you really make sure that your patients come back to the office? Well, the first thing is patient care from beginning to end. It is so important. We're gonna talk about this in the next slide, which is a good first impression. 
What do the patients see when they first walk into the practice? Who do they notice? What do they notice? Do they really feel welcomed when they arrive or do they feel like it's crazy and um, everything's out of sorts and nobody knows who's who? It's going to make a huge difference. I always tell the front office and the staff, anytime I'm training or going over items with new girls or management that we'll talk about on the next slide is first impression begins at the front desk. We're often, like Lois said, it's it's an, a basically position that's forgotten about, if you will. Everybody's like, the assistant is important, the hygienist and the doctor, of course. The front desk, guys, scheduling is the heartbeat to every practice. How the front desk, that's the first impression, how they portray themselves is going to 100% set the tone across the board. I like to give four tips, and these are like pro tips, but also I think always go-to guides for people to know whether it be office managers, dental doctors, whatever the case may be. And it's really not just for dentistry, but all the way around. So friendly and personable. We definitely want to make sure that everybody is welcomed. Hi, how are you? How have you been? It's so good to finally see you in person. We're so glad you came in. It makes a difference other than somebody saying, yes, do you have an appointment today? Well, of course they have an appointment today, but you want to welcome them with open arms rather than being sad or being grumpy or upset. I always tell people, although it's very hard, leave your personal business at the door. When you come to work, you are in work mode. You are there to definitely get a job taken care of. That 100% includes taking care of the patient. The second one, a designated staff to answer the phone. I know not doctors can always do this, dental offices. I always say, if you have a front desk staff big enough, excuse me, where you can have somebody who is the primary check-in and then the other front desk can answer the phone, it's going to be a really great thing. And let me tell you why. I would say 99% of the time, if you're on the phone, when a patient comes in, you always do the whole finger. Oh, give me just a second. I'm, I'm on the phone. Um, let me finish up with the patient. I'll be with you in just a second. And then not only is that patient hearing the conversation that you're having, the patient on the phone then knows they're not a priority because there's a patient directly in front of you. So I always say, if you can have a designated check-in, make sure and have somebody do that because it really does make a difference. The other one is a clean environment. I will tell you, you do not know how many dental offices that I have gone to or worked in where I walk in and think, oh my gosh, turn back around because it is messy. It is dirty. There are papers everywhere. The front desk is just organized and you're thinking, what am I stepping into? I always say a clean environment is key, a clean lobby, even if that means after, let's say, an hour, designate somebody, hey, Lindsay, can you check the front desk area to make sure the magazines are straight, make sure that the chairs are straight, you know, that the dust is off all the tables, anything makes a little difference, even bathrooms, do you have toilet paper, paper towels, things where the patient doesn't have to ask, so they know that you're keeping up with that stuff. That goes into being organized. Obviously, when you walk into a front desk and you see papers all over the place, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Talk about non-multitasker. You wanna be presentable and make sure that patient knows that you are 100% about taking care of every patient, but you're organized while doing it. Another trick that I like to say is don't have food and drinks up at the front desk. When you're talking to a patient, you're scheduling a patient, Put your drink in something that's a little bit more professional as far as like a Yeti or like a nicer cup than like a water burger drink that's just sitting on there with your hamburger and fries and you're chewing gum and eating while all these patients are coming in. You think a patient doesn't notice when you grab in your drawer and take a real quick bite? Trust me, I've done it and they notice. So you want to make sure that you're always doing that in the back, even if you tell somebody, hey guys, I need to take a couple minutes to grab a quick snack. I'll be right back. Again, it's going to make a world of difference. You look professional, it is professional, and it's going to make wonders. Again, there's that wonder. It's going to make wonders happen within the patient's care and how they see everything from the front to the back to the start to the end. On the next thing, so many offices right now are looking at getting new patients in. It's pretty standard. Everybody wants to get new patients in, whether it's scheduling somebody you've never seen before, whether it's word of mouth reviews. I always say, although people are focused on getting new patients in, make sure you do not forget about the patients who are existing and who know you, who have been patients for years and are really coming through that door. I always say to roll out the red carpet for every single person, even if it's a difficult patient and you know that it's a difficult patient and the doctor's like, oh no, 
this person's coming in like, guys, get ready, have your Wheaties on hand. You always want to make sure that that patient thinks that they're awesome. Again, from beginning to end, impression is everything. And one person can set that off from the start. It can ruin it and it can be horrible for the whole appointment. If one person ruins it, it kind of ruins it for the rest of the team. So really make sure that you focus on the people that are coming in. I always say again, have a plan when people come in for an appointment, make sure that you know who's coming in. Check the schedule. Patient pictures are so important. Make sure you look at a picture and know, okay, 10 minutes till, let me look. Let me see who's coming in. When you welcome somebody by saying, hey, Lindsay, hey, Courtney, hey, Lois, and they're like, oh, wow, like they, they really know me. You may not know them from Adam, but you know that you looked at their patient picture and it makes them feel special. So Lois hit it. It is so important to make patients feel special from beginning to end. So true. And, you know, patients who are fearful are going to come across as the most difficult of patients. And all you need to do is a little extra TLC to kind of set the tone and, and really uh, make their day and make their appointment. Uh, yeah, so also want to make sure that you're you're stressing the importance of making that next scheduled visit, whether you're doing a chair side and then handing them off to your financial coordinator, or maybe you're just using important verbal skills. Like do you, instead of saying, do you want to go ahead and schedule your next appointment? What is that? I think you all know by now that's a yes, no question. Don't set, don't ask yes, no questions. Uh, instead, let's go ahead and make your next appointment or we're going to stop and see Lois. She'll get your receipt for you and schedule your next appointment. What questions can we answer for you about your dentistry today? It's a great segue and a wonderful handoff, and it can make the patient feel a better trust in the practice when you're using your verbal skills for the greater good. That being said, on the next slide, there's some magic words that you want to utilize for patients who are really maybe objecting to schedule their next uh, continuing care appointment. They might say, well, you know, I don't know my schedule in six months. Well, I completely understand what we've discovered for our patients who are as busy as you is that when we schedule your next appointment now, guess what? You know what you're doing in, in six months. Um, so a couple of the exceptions to the rule, of course, are people who work on a shift and their shift, like for the police and firefighters and even uh, nurses and doctors and even school schedules, those shifts that they can change. Those patients truly don't know what their schedule is like in six months. Someone like me, I travel for a living. I never made my appointment in six months, but I'm a very reliable patient. So it's not necessarily a difficult patient. It's just, you're gonna to have to bend your ways to your most reliable people to accommodate that scenario. So a pro tip is if the, in the treatment room and your patients are focused um, on their oral health right there, chair side, talk to them about their next appointment while they're there. Um, Mr. Patient, I see that you came in today, Tuesday at 10 o'clock. The next two Tuesdays I have available in six months are this day and this day. Which of those works best for you? You make, you're telling the truth in advance, basically, about planting the seed in the patient's mind that that's going to be the best opportunity for them to get their next ideal care appointment. Now, Sarah, I think you have a couple things to say on our next few slides. I do. You know, this was really fun for me to learn this when I was setting um, up for this webinar with some of these amazing, amazing office managers and these women on this panel today. Um, but they told me some really crazy stuff they've done to save an appointment from cancellation. Nothing illegal. Nothing illegal. Um, but some really creative ideas that they had. So I'm wondering if you guys on the call have done the same thing. If you have some crazy thing that you've done to save an appointment so that they did not cancel, drop it in the chat. Again, make sure to change that from panelists to panelists and attendees in the blue bubble and share that knowledge with the other people on the call here. Let us know what's the craziest thing you have ever done to save an appointment. And while you guys are thinking and typing, I'm going to ask Lois, what's the craziest thing you have done to save a, an appointment so that it did not cancel? <laughs> it's my favorite story to tell. We sent a private car service for a patient who had a, a multiple quadrant high dollar appointment. And we made that the norm. If the patient had, what we realized is that those tend to be the patients who are investing their time and their money and maybe some of the most fearful patients. So we made it as easy on them as possible. And we sent a private car service to patients who had scheduled dentistry for more than $10,000. And it really made them feel special. And guess what? They never failed their appointment. That's amazing. Courtney, what about you? What have you done to make sure that someone didn't cancel their appointment? 
Oh, so I had to go pick up a patient's twins and they were 14 years old from school and they did not want to get in my car. <laughs> so they had a huge <laughs> debacle in front of the school about them crying as I'm trying to pull them in my car. Your mom's getting a crown, get in here. Anyway, we finally got them in the car and we had to do math homework and it just, they were crying, there were highlighters everywhere. And it was just a long day, but the patient kept their appointment and um, they came back afterwards too. So <laughs> that's amazing. Things we that's do. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Lindsay, what about you? Um, I actually had one time, we're in Texas, we rarely get winter storms, although this year was an exception. Um, we had a year one time where we had a really bad storm, we were closed for four days, we knew it was coming, we knew it was going to hit, so we prepared people, hey, we may be calling late in the evening if this really comes through. Um, I actually went to our office with another staff member, we started calling at nine o'clock at night, we called until midnight, every single patient who was scheduled for the next four days, and they loved it, because they're like, oh my gosh, now we know we don't have to get up early, see if you guys are open. Um, so it was pretty crazy. I think we rolled in right before this snore, uh, the snowstorm hit in our houses, but it was nuts. I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is the first calling dental uh, from your dental office at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I guess the moral of the story there is like there really is a lot of really creative ways to solve problems. If that means babysitting or sending a vehicle or making calls until midnight. Uh, there, there's no end to the, the madness of the role of making sure that you guys are protecting those profits. And um, hopefully some of those ideas will help inspire you guys on the call today um, to think outside the box. If you've got a cancellation potentially coming through and trying to save that appointment, make sure there's no empty chairs or empty spaces on your calendar. So speaking of great ways to manage patients and manage their care, their care, you know, ultimately our patients, they need to feel wanted, welcome, and valued. So the best way to kill three birds with one stone is through your post-operative calls. So post-op calls are generally associated with anyone who's received anesthesia the day prior. Um, however, you guys can come up with this and kind of stretch out what that really means. So let's say you had someone that you ran late with during uh, their appointment. Maybe you just want to cover another round of apologies with a post-op call. Or heaven forbid, someone accidentally trips over their feet and falls in the hallway. So just to see that they're doing okay, you might want to engage in some of these post-op calls. But when you're doing these calls, you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of what they have to offer. So before you even pick up the, the phone to call these patients, go through this little checklist here. So make sure you're preparing yourself for these calls. You know, what's the intention of this call? Uh, what do I need to accomplish? So I need to encourage a review because you don't want to call a patient and ask them to leave a review and they just did it the night before. Do they have their next appointment on the books? And once you cross all those items off your list, then go ahead and actually completing that call. But with that piece being said, the most important about this whole checklist is making sure that you're documenting the conversation. So that way you can rely on that or use it in the future if you ever need to. So I would highly suggest even capturing a sentence that's a direct quote from the patient. So if Ms. Emerald says during the post-op call, that was a really easy root canal. I actually fell asleep in the chair. I would actually use that exact sentence with quotes in the clinical notes. As you have to remember this piece too, you know, post-op calls are an area of internal marketing, which, you know, marketing is what drives your practice. So these post-op calls are an unlimited resourceful tool. So speaking of our marketing, on our next slide, I actually have a few things that I wanted to go over. And marketing is one of my favorite parts of dentistry. So we all know how effective social media marketing is. I'm sure you guys all remember the hot dentist a couple of years back. And if you think about it, it cost him $0 to film that 45 second gorgeous video, upload it to their Facebook page, millions of views later, he's on the Ellen Show. So, you know, media is your influential friend that knows a lot of people. And if you treat it right, it can take your practice really anywhere you want to go with it. So what I'm going to do on the next slide is in addition to what you see here, is I want to share some two really fun marketing ideas that I have seen work out very nicely in the past. And before I get to these two suggestions, just a little feedback and way to ultimately uh, execute this is at the end of the year, you know, prepare a 12 month marketing plan. So this November, sit down with your team, order lunch for everybody and just brainstorm at least 12 events or campaigns, you know, one each month. So it's all organized and you're ready for consistent marketing for the entire year. So two ideas. The first one is a all call for Girl Scout cookies. So the campaign is, hey, we'll buy two cases of cookies from any Girl Scout troop that comes into our office in uniform for a quick picture. 
you know, email us to arrange for you to stop by and maybe even worth having at the end, you know, we'll donate all your cookies to a local building shelter or something along those lines. So that's Great. a really fun idea. Yeah, who doesn't love cookies? Actually, I did it one time and the brother of these twins, uh, he was in the Boy Scouts and he was selling popcorn and he asked if we could do the same thing with the Boy Scouts. And jokingly, I said, you know, girls rule and boys drool. And he starts crying. <laughs> And then the little girl sees him crying, so she's laughing. And, and so you might have to do the Boy Scouts popcorn if you guys end up doing this. But um, the second idea is showcasing a comfort menu in your practice. So a comfort menu is a list of all the accommodations that you guys have to offer. And this menu is printed out on a nice piece of paper. It's you know, in a nice frame, and it's displayed very beautifully in your office. But it would list items, you know, like headphones with music chiropractic neck pillow, soft blankets, a warm towel for after treatment, coffee bar, phone charging station, three bobby pins, whatever you guys feel that would make your patients really say, wow, that's cool. Uh, so I hope you guys try those two ideas out. Let us know how they go. Send us pictures and so we can see. And so I'm going to pass it back over to you, Lois, to keep us okay. uh, rocking and rolling. Well, tip number five is to know your patient uh, retention percentage. I love to measure numbers that tell me a story and retention tells you a story. So what you want to set as a goal is 85% of your patients that come in on the schedule, you want them to have a new and another appointment. It's, it's unrealistic to say 100%. So if you have 85% of your patients rescheduling their appointment, your retention rate is going to be excellent. And then making sure um, that you get them back on the schedule, I'm going to hand it off to Lindsay. Awesome. Now guys, how to get your patients back in the office. One thing I did want to mention in the next slide, magic words for overdue hygiene patients. This can go for unscheduled treatment as well. People often ask me, what wording do you use? Of course you don't call saying, do you want to come in for your appointment? We have some openings. Guys, you definitely need to change it up, make it more personal. This is an example. Hi, Lindsay. This is Lindsay from the dental office. And the doctor was reviewing your chart. We saw that you haven't been in and we would love to see you. We really miss you. Let's get you scheduled. How does next week work? Giving that personal um, touch behind it that you care, that it goes a long way. And if they know the doctor or the hygienist is looking at their charts and really worried about when they're coming in, that's going to work wonders. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't have time to call on the schedule. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Well, let's talk again about the next slide. One more time, we have full schedule. It is an awesome ESS service that we offer. We do unscheduled treatment, unscheduled recall appointments needed. We really take that pressure off of the front office staff to really get those patients in. Sometimes they want a direct person to contact rather than waiting through the phones on who they can get. So definitely reach out to us. Again, we stand apart. We offer a money back guarantee on appointments that are not made. Um, and obviously I love this for humans by humans. We are not robotic when we schedule. So everything <laughs> is talking to an actual live person. We offer so much more other than just scheduling. So just make sure and give us a call. You can call at 1-844-ESIS or email the team at esis.me for more information. And this one I would love for Lois to talk about a little bit. This is another exciting new service we have for ESIS. Lois, tell us about the Dental Coaching Institute. So we have this newly formed service to help our practices improve their bottom line, improve their verbal skills, and really identify where their trouble spots are to help them uh, make better use out of their practice. So we have three different levels. We have, um, we have the level that is virtual coaching, where you sign up for three coaching calls, and you might want to improve one or two areas of your practice. The next level that we have is in-office training, where we can come in and observe and on the spot train and then do a team meeting afterwards. That includes three virtual coaching calls. And then we have the, um, the full package, the elite package, which is 12 months of coaching, which will include goal setting and overhead management and uh, systematic uh, protocols and filling your schedule and, and talking about verbal skills. So we're really here dedicated. We have a team of uh, expert consultants, and, um, including me, ready, willing, and able to help you improve your bottom line and uh, de-stress your practice. This. Awesome, Lois, that is so exciting. All right, guys, we are right at the end of our presentation and we are right on time. We got about three minutes left in the hour and we're gonna use that time to answer questions. We'll stay on a few extra minutes if more questions come in as well. So if you have any additional questions, go ahead and drop them in that Q&A below. We've got a few to start us off. 
I'm going to go ahead and read through those. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us on the call. Quick housekeeping reminders, you will get a copy of this recording as well as the slides. We'll send those to you within the next 24 hours. And again, huge round of applause. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Lindsay. I know we flew through some of that content because we had a lot we wanted to cover in this hour. So we went fast. <laughs> so don't worry, you have the recording coming your way. You can pause. Maybe they even have a feature where you can slow it down because I know we were trying to squeeze a lot in, but uh, we really wanted to give you guys as much help as possible in this short one hour time span. So first question I've got um, is from Heather. Heather wanted to know how many staff members should one doctor one hygienist, 1.2 million in collections, fee for service, who files insurance for half of the patients run effectively. What do you think, uh, Wallace? Well, I can answer that. It really depends on the kind of dentistry that you're um, performing in the dental practice. If you have a general bread and butter practice, I always recommend for um, even a smaller practice that you have at least two people on the administrative side, one for uh, the, as your director of first imp impression scheduling coordinator, and then one on the financial side, delivering treatment plans, collecting the money and following up on all the overdue monies. And that seems to flow the best to have two, no matter what size your practice, at least two. At least two, awesome, okay, great. All right, next question is about social media. How many times should a practice be posting on social media in any given day or week? So I think usually the standard is probably once a day, but it's probably whatever you're comfortable with. You know, you can do at least no, I would say no less than once a week, but I think you can guys you can have it. If you have a campaign already set, you can say every other Tuesday, we're gonna do this. Every Wednesday, we're gonna have this schedule. So something that's consistent so everyone knows in the practice when to expect to post. Um, but it's great about social media. There's no social media police, right? It's okay. You can do it however often and however frequently that you would like. But you want to make sure that it's active and that it's current and up to date. Because nothing is worse when you look at someone's Facebook page and they haven't posted since last Easter. You know, you don't even realize, you know, are they still even a real office? Uh, so making sure it's consistent and that your information, like what Lindsay was talking about, is accurate and up to date. Right. Absolutely. Consistency is the most important part, right? Frequency, Absolutely. it is important, but consistency is definitely the first most important piece. It doesn't look good if you post every single day for 10 days and you don't post for 30, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it would be better to take those 10 posts and spread them out over that time period instead mm -hmm. of just cramming it all in and then just ignoring it for uh, a month. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. All right, next up, uh, we have another question that says, uh, we use, well, actually, first, the first part of the question is um, a statement. It says, hi, Lois. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second part of the question is, uh, we use Curve, which I know you support, but we have had months of claims uh, get rejected and Curve can't seem to solve the issue. Do you have any suggestions for them? Well, Curve has dedicated uh, team members that should be able to be available on short notice to help them resolve those issues. I love any cloud-based software that helps a practice become more efficient. But if you're having a hiccup with the claims, there may be an issue with your internet connection. There may be another issue that may not be related to Curve. So I would definitely start with Curve and then check with your IT person to make sure that your communication lines are, that the speed of your internet can catch up to the cloud based service. So make sure that your speed of your internet is, is good and working well. Yeah, that's super important. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Lois. Next question is from Meredith. Will this recording along with previous sessions be available to clients so we can get our other team members on board? Absolutely. When we email you this recording in slide deck, we will include the previous part one and part two recordings as well. So you can have all three of them. We put them on our YouTube channel as well. So if you go to our YouTube channel and you subscribe, you'll actually get an alert every time we post a new video, a new tip, um, or a new webinar recording like this. You guys can feel free to check it out there as well, but we will email it to you as well. All right, next question is from Eliza. I'm fairly new to the office that she's working in. She started in October. Um, there aren't a ton of protocols, and so she's pushing really hard for many, uh, but what areas should she start in? She said she's only been there a couple of months, but wants to get things into a much more organized place. Where would you guys recommend she focus first? Uh, you want to get the money off the books and the money on the books. So you'd want accounts receivable and insurance protocols firmly in place. And you want your scheduling protocols firmly in place, pre-blocking your schedule, ideal day appointments, et cetera. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I always say, um, sorry to interrupt, Sarah. Just, I always say, yeah, yeah. always reach out to your lead SC or your team leader. Let them know if there's something um, as far as in the office that you feel like you can implement. You can always get them on board to maybe talk to the office manager, talk to the doctor about getting new things. Sometimes you're so nervous about um, if you're new, like saying what you feel, but a mm -hmm. lot of our team leaders and lead SCs are probably right on the same page as you. So make sure you just reach out for help. Um, it's so important and they can kind of get the ball rolling from there to make sure that some of those items go into play. Yeah. yeah practice, awesome. Sign up for multi and multiple location practice, uh, sign up for ESS services. And now they're hiring us to go in and train the verbal skills protocols in office so that they can make that process of outsourcing and in office communications seamless. So that was a really brilliant part on, on their part to be able to do that because now they're going to have much better efficiencies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Courtney, where would you start if you were jumping into a practice and it was a little bit of mayhem? Where would you go and focus yeah. your time? So I think it would be covering the expectation. So what you and the doctor want to come up with, what is the expectation of the team? How are we expecting to work, work together as a group? How are the, what are the expectations of patient care? So that way everyone is on the same page and you are going after the same goal every single day. What's the expectation of our goals? What do we need to do Monday through Friday to achieve these goals? So that way everyone completely is on the same step at the same time, uh, which is a big, it's a big deal, right? But if you have an office where you're always uh, off step, it's gonna be very, very confusing and very frustrating for all parties involved. So I would go through each piece um, and making sure everyone knows what their role is, how to achieve it, what their resources are, and making sure that patient care stays number one. And, and to yeah. add one more element to that, make sure that you create a calendar for yourself. If you have multiple roles and you're one person, create a schedule for yourself to achieve some of these tasks and you'll always, you'll always stay on track. And, and I think one, one closing thought there too is that um, if it feels like it's too much for you, Eliza, you know, know the areas where you can focus your time and effort. And if you can outsource things or get help from outside consultants or coaches like we have here at ESIS, we're here, right? So we can jump in and help you guys if you are ever to a point where like, hey man, I just can't make up and down and all of this. <laughs> and you need some outside experts. We've got people like Lois who can come in and actually help coach and consult to get your practice uh, out of the mayhem and chaos, right? So don't right. forget to rely on, on the family you have here at ESIS who's here to support you guys um, with whatever you guys may need. That is the last question we have. Any closing thoughts, Courtney, Lois, or Lindsay, before we wrap up? I love, I, I loved being on this webinar for these, uh, these amazing smart women. And um, I totally appreciate the investment of time that, that our attendees had in improving their bottom lines. It's really uh, encouraging for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank awesome. you, Sarah. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you guys so much for having me. Please reach out if you have any questions because all you have to do is ask for help sometimes to get um, great responses. So please don't be scared to ask for help. We are happy and here to help with whatever you need. Absolutely. You guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, this is just a few of the amazing people that are on our team at eAssist and I'm really lucky to work with them every single day. But if you, have, if you want the opportunity to work with them as well, please reach out to us. You can contact us directly um, at webinar at eAssist.me and we can get in touch with panelists there. Again, if you want to talk to Lois about coaching, you can email coaching at eAssist.me. If you want to talk about that amazing full schedule product, the service of keeping your um, schedule completely full by humans, not robots, that's working with Lindsay here. You can email team at eAssist.me. So thank you guys so, so much. We have a, a whole bunch of things we'd love to share with you guys in our next webinar. So we look forward to seeing you guys then. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.